Welcome to Wake Up with Pastor Scott and Pastor Jason Anderson from Living Word Bible Church in Mesa, Arizona. Grab a cup of coffee and enjoy this daily dose of scripture and morning prayer. Brought to you by Christian Living Radio. Now, I want to say this. Those of you that are watching on the radio too. Seltzer water, pineapple. You feel like you raise a child in the way they should go. And then they start... It's not... Sparkling water is really bad soda. That's all it is. It's like, hey, let's let's take a soda pop that's really good and have no flavor to it. In the office we're talking about, you either love it or you hate it. I hate it with all my heart. In the comments, please vote. Do you love sparkling water or do you hate sparkling water? This is what they'll serve in hell. I'm I'm, I'm, I'm pretty sure of this. It'll be sparkling water and I don't want it. That they could possibly... We'll be right back. Welcome to Wake Up, a daily Bible study from Pastors Scott and Jason Anderson, a morning scripture with your morning coffee, brought to you by Living Word. We encourage you to wake up with us every morning by watching us on YouTube. Visit wakeuptv.tv or search Daily Bible Study on YouTube. Good morning. Welcome to Wake Up. Where we wake up. I'm Pastor Scott. I'm Lakin. He's my son. My son is on the show today. Jason's on vacation. Yeah. And it's good. He should get 360 days a year of it. <laughs> it's decent. Every time I say this, so what makes it funny is I know that Jason holds it up and screams because yeah. I take far more vacation than he does. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But he just happened to, he had his normal vacation and then his wife said, hey, 20. and they're doing their 25 year yeah. anniversary vacation. Yeah. That's so cool. And so he took her up to Prescott and uh, <laughs> I can't get all straight face. <laughs> I love press press up, but, yeah. but it's funny for 25 years. He's like, baby, we're going to... We're going no, to somewhere big. They're doing all Canada. They're yeah. all over. He's, you got to see all of his pictures and, mm-hmm. and super cool stuff yeah. up in Canada. I've only been to Canada in the winter. It's not... It's not good. No, yeah. no I'm just going to say cold. that to you folks. It's not good in the winter. Well, that's why people leave Canada in the winter. It like was specifically below zero when yeah. I was there. Specifically don't want to be in... They'll buy another house. Just I would drink in Canada for this water before I <laughs> yeah. lived in Canada for the thing. Well, I, well, now, we were doing... Uh, God, we forgot about uh, funny dad quotes on Friday. Oh. But it made me think of Heath was home, and he lost his keys. What did I tell him? Yeah, your keys go in two places. Heath, come on. And he's... And he got so angry. He goes, Dad, I don't have time <laughs> for, to learn from you right now. <laughs> we're, and we're, I just go, but I can't help you, son, because if they were in the two places. Yeah, then you, yeah. And uh, so anyway, what's our scripture today? Oh, okay, so our scripture is John 4, uh, and we're going to start at, at 4, John 4, 4. It's the uh, Samaritan woman at the well with Jesus. Oh, I love this story. And so uh, starting at, at 4, 4, it says, now he had to go through Samaria. It's talking about Jesus. So he came to a town in Samaria called Sikar. I hope I didn't murder that word. Near the plot of ground Jacob had given to his son Joseph. Jacob's well was there and Jesus, tired as he was from the journey, sat down by the well. It was about noon. None of that matters. I don't know why I read that part. So let's start at seven. (laughs) When a Samaritan woman came to draw water, Jesus said to her, will you give me a drink? Or in other words, he said, I'm I'm thirsty. And so uh, his disciples had gone into town to buy food. But, but really quick, I just want to, to, to expound on, he's not actually asking for water. When Jesus no. says things, he's playing chess. And so what he's... I love what you said there. He's playing chess. He's playing chess. He's set, he's, he's, and I, I, I had this idea um, last night. He's setting you up. Yeah. He's a setup. So he's yeah. the guy that, you know, you're watching basketball in the alley-oop. He's, mm. God's trying to set you up. So yeah. he's, he's setting up a, a, a circumstance right yeah. now. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And so, and she falls into it. She falls into it. So, uh, uh, shoot, where are we at? Uh, verse 9, the Samaritan woman said to him, You are a Jew and I am a Samaritan woman. How can you ask me for a drink? For Jews do not associate with Samaritans. Jesus answered, If you knew the gift of God and who it is that asks you for a drink, you would have asked him and he would have given you living water. But really what he's, he's showing her is, it doesn't matter Samaritan or Jew, I love you. And so the very first thing that, that, that I want to talk about is that, uh, you know, sometimes we come to Jesus saying, how can you love me? And Jesus says, none of that matters. I, I love you. Right. And that's hey, point number I'm, one. I love that point because, well, Pat, you know, here's the thing, God, how, how would you love me? You know, I've been divorced and, and, and I, I was a horrible uh, this and, and I got hooked on this and I got these addictions. I got all these bad things. And isn't that what we oftentimes do? We do exactly what she does. She goes, well, stop it. Mm. Why are you even talking to me? God? Why, 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 how can I even walk into your house? And what an incredible point that the first thing, God's like, but I love you just the way you are. Yeah. Yeah. If you, yeah. If you knew. Yeah. 
you would know how much I love you, my, the depth, the width, the, how, how deep it is, my love, yeah. right? Isn't that what, what Paul was talking about? He's like, hey, I wish you would realize the love. Yeah. And I think that when we realize the love that God has for us, I think that it allows us to go forth and love those that are around us and make a difference because that's what happened. Yeah, yeah. And he's even, I mean, he's even saying, he's even saying, if you knew how, in a, in a way, he's saying, if you knew how much I loved you, then you would actually not be afraid to ask of me. You would not be afraid yeah. to ask me for the living water that I right. have. And I, wow, that's another great point. We can make him number two. People are afraid, sometimes I've, I've met with people who are afraid to ask God for stuff mm. because once again, they, they don't feel worthy. Yeah. They don't feel like, well, I, you know, God can't heal me because, I mean, Pastor, if you knew what I've done, yeah. how could God heal me? Mm. And the Bible doesn't say that your healing is based on your works. It says God's promises are yes and amen. It uh, doesn't matter what you've done. It doesn't matter the things, that you, the troubles you've made in this life. The, the perfect picture is the prodigal son. Yeah. The son that went out and made a big old mess. Hmm. And he had the same thing. He's like, well, I know that my dad's not going to fully love me as a son again. But my dad, at least he'll make me at least a servant. You know, at least I can clean. And it'll be a little bit better. Yeah, and, and when he comes home, once again, it was a perfect picture of what you're talking about. Yeah. It was, come on in. We're going to kill a bull. Yeah. I love killing a bull. Yeah. I want to do that when you guys come home. I want to kill... <laughs> I do. When you guys come home, <laughs> was he good? Like you came over last night, and I, in my mind, I go, "Well, I wish I had a bull. If I had a bull, was, yeah. I'd have killed it last night." We had bagels. That wasn't the same. Yeah, we it's had close. We had a, no, it's no, close. we had a stupid he goes bagel. bagel no. bull. I'm angry at the bagel now. <laughs> oh, I am. I'm buying a bull. So in there another, in give another, me a comment. I'm buying a bull. bull. In another, in another way, Jesus is saying, even if you do not like the water that I give you, even if you do not like uh, seltzer water. Okay. I still love you. And so I thought, that, what is a perfect... <laughs> I think he loves per- me more because I don't like self <laughs> water. <laughs> okay, so let's go on. Let's go okay, on. Okay, 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 so uh, let's go on to the, the, the other time that Jesus says in the scripture, uh, I'm thirsty. When you shared this to me, I was like, wow. You could, <laughs> it, it's crazy how the next generation, like, like every time you, you share stuff, I go, well, how come I didn't see that? I've been reading the Bible for a lot longer than you. It's like really cool. Thank so anyway, you. Thank no, you. I'm building this up because it's cool. Go. <laughs> so the other time that, that Jesus said, I'm thirsty in the New Testament is John 19, 28 and, and 29. And it's right after he goes through this period of, of disconnection from God. But he says, I'm thirsty. And what, what, I, what I thought so so And he was good. on the... He's on the cross. He's on the cross. That's good for them to know. He's yeah, on the he's cross. On the, this is when he's on the cross. So what I thought was so interesting is he knows the prophecy is that we, uh, we would give him, uh, I, think, I think it says wine vinegar mm-hmm. when he asks for water. And so when he says, I'm thirsty, he knows what's going to happen. He already knows what he's going to get. He's going to get self. It's actually self water. What, that's, that's what, what they give him. They put it in the sewer. The prophecy Gosh, says it's self it. water. So, so, <laughs> and so he's like, I don't want it. He's playing chess. Yes. He's playing chess. He's not actually thirsty. So what he's doing is he is, he is uh, um, you know, uh, fulfilling the scripture. He's fulfilling the prophecy. Right. But in another way, I think he's also sending a message to everybody who's reading or has read or heard about him and the Samaritan woman. And so when he says, I'm thirsty, what he's actually saying is he's sending a message to us saying, I love you just as you are. Will you thirst for me as much as I thirst for you? I am a living well. Come to me. He's opening up the conversation. He's opening up the conversation. He's He's starting the the conversation again. So he he started with Samaritan woman and got all the city saved. Yeah. And so now he is on the cross, right? Yeah. And he once again opens up the conversation. Yeah. To you that are listening out there, that God says, hey, I don't care how broken you feel. I don't care about what you've gone through. I don't care about the, the sins and the junk that you have done. He's saying, hey, if you knew how much I loved you, yeah. you would realize that none of that matters yeah. and that you are perfect the way that you are. He's starting the conversation. That's what, he, that's what he's doing. He's opening up. And, and uh, he's, it's, it's cool because with the Samaritan woman, it's just him, the Samaritan woman. And he didn't get to have that conversation with everyone he possibly wanted. So then once he's on the cross, he's starting the conversation with everyone that he's just about to finish, finish the sacrifice to. And so that was... That that's was you. What, yeah, that's, that's you if you're watching it. That's, that's you. We got to pray over their day. Dear Heavenly Father, Lord, we thank you and praise you for those that are watching. That, Lord, they begin to realize the love that you have for them. It doesn't matter what they've done. You love them the way that they are. You just do. You're just, they, they could be the prodigal son who's like, I don't know if I'm worthy. Hmm. And, and Jesus is saying, you are worthy. Come on in. Let me get a bowl. Let me hug you. Let me embrace you. Let me, let me be a part of your life. We thank you and praise you in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Watch this clip. So a, uh, a guy, you know, I've been married quite some time. He's getting some, some help with a counselor, trying to figure out some stuff in life. And been going for a while, but on this particular day, he goes, you know what, I, 
I think my wife's trying to kill me. I think she's trying to kill me. After 37 years, I think she's... And the counselor's like, stop. He's like, I do. She, she, she's never made me anything in the morning in all these years. And now she's making me tea every morning. And it looks funny and it smells funny. And the counselor's like, I don't think so. He's like, but don't drink the tea until I meet with her. Let's meet next week and uh, try, try and bring her in. And let's see what's going on. And so they come in the next week. And the counselor says, all right, let me... Uh, meet with her by myself for a little bit. They're in there almost a full hour. Counselor comes out. His hair is all kind of tussled. He's just sweating. You could tell he's just frustrated. And he comes over. He goes, you know what? Drink the tea. Drink the poison. That's what I would do if I were you. <laughs> Come on, somebody. Loo, 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 loo. <laughs> Open up your Bibles this morning to 2 Corinthians 5.19. Don't drink the tea. Amen. 2 Corinthians 5.19. We start a brand new series called This Is Us. How many people would admit that they've watched This Is Us? How many are lying right now but did watch it? Anybody out there? Right? You didn't put your hand up? This is us. Me and my Holly, we're, uh, we love TV shows. We love to binge watch. And so we'll get a hold of something and uh, grandma or Mimi will have the kids for a little while and we'll just hit episode after episode. Just it's one of the great things that we enjoy doing. And so when we heard about This Is Us and everybody was talking about it, I was like, let's try it. So we put it on. Episode number one, I won't lie to you, was an epic episode. I, I was hooked. I was like, this is amazing. Like, it's cool if you haven't watched it. Like, the, the, it's like what's happening right now in this family's life. And then they go back in a sneaky way. And it's like 30 years, right? And now you're trying to figure out how we got from here all the way to where we are right now. So first up, I'm like, I'm in. There's some troubles and things, but they, there was victory. There was some cool things that happened. The second episode... Things begin to go downhill a little bit for everybody, but that's all right. We're going to have a comeback is what the, we're, we're doing. I'm going to get excited. I was not as happy as I wanted to be the third episode. The fourth episode, you find out they kill off my favorite character. <laughs> right? Some of you know what I'm talking about. And now here's the thing. And then you also find out that his wife marries his best friend. So now every episode, I'm just waiting to find out, did you die today? Is it today? Don't get in the car. Don't get in the car, baby. Right? You just don't know. And then you're like, oh, hey, Mr. Best Friend, flirty boy. What are you doing? <laughs> yeah, why are you all up in the family business? I already know where this ends up. And then it just, you know, when you think that their lives can't get any worse... The writers who are not taking appropriate measures of Zoloff in their life. That's all I'm saying. Find a way to take it down another notch and another notch. And things get worse and they get worse until I finally, I looked at Holly, I go, this is not us. I want you to know, this is not us at all. That's not who we are. We're, we're not, I can't watch this anymore because I just want to end it all. It's not a good thing. This is not us. And here's the thing. The world tries to say who us is. But this series is all about finding out who we as Christians are. That we're not bound by the same limits and the same chains and the same junk and the same depression that the world may be bound of. Because the Bible says we may live in the world, but I'm not of the world. I, right? I, come on somebody out there. We got to find out what we can expect in our life and what life looks like for us Christians, us living word, Bible church, uh, people that are here today. What, what can we have and what can we do and what can we experience and what does life look like for us? It's like a identity. You know, the great teams out there, one of the big things that the coaches and the veterans do is they want to create a team identity, who we are as a team. Chicago Bulls, there's a story of this rookie who showed up uh, late for practice within the first week. And Scotty Pippen and Michael Jordan pulled him aside after practice and said, all right, um, the Chicago Bulls are not late for practice. The guy's like, yeah, 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 I had this and that. No, 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 you don't understand. The Chicago Bulls, are never late for practice. And I noticed that you stopped right when practice was over. He's like, yeah, it was over. No, no, no. Chicago Bulls, we continue practicing for about an hour afterwards. You'll be shooting free throws. If you want to be a Chicago Bull, we shoot free throws for about 45 minutes after practice. We keep shooting. We keep doing. Chicago Bulls work harder than any other team in the NBA. The Chicago Bulls never give up. Let me tell you who the Chicago Bulls are. And it creates an identity. We all have a desire to be a part of something great, something bigger than ourselves. And so we got to have an identity. 
identity. We, do, we teach this. Our parenting conference is coming up. I think you'll see a video at the end. And if you've got kids, don't miss it. Oh, my gosh. It's so good. But one of the things that me and Holly teach is having a family identity. That your kids are able to say, okay, this is who the Andersons are, is what my family is. And so as the Andersons, yeah, we're happy all the time. That's just what the Andersons do. Yeah, we're not grumpy. The Andersons don't talk back. The Andersons don't whine. The Andersons, well, my friends have an iPhone. That's super cool for them. But the Andersons don't get a phone until they're in junior high. And they have to have straight A's to get that. That's just what they, I don't care what everybody else does. I'm just telling you what the, the Andersons don't have their phones out while we're at a family dinner. This is what the, hey, come on somebody. They're just telling you what the Andersons do. I don't know what you guys do. But it's very important that your family has this winning mentality. It doesn't mean that we don't mess up here and there. But for the most part, this is how the Andersons act in public. And this is how the Andersons do things. And this is the Andersons. Same thing for Living Word Bible Church. Same for Christians. When we go through life and we don't know that we're a part of a winning team. How many people know we are part of a winning team? We win in the end. We're a part of something great and amazing. But we got to get our identity of who we are so we don't get all jumbled up with what the world says we are and what God says we are. we got to find out what our daddy is really like. Just because you saw it on a Kardashian and what they think God is like, how many people know that may not be true? Right? Just because you saw it on a TV show doesn't mean that's who your God is. We have to have a proper identity of who God is. If my kids thought that whenever they messed up, I gave them a sickness or a disease, that would hinder our relationship and how it can grow. Right? So the wrong identity of what God is to you, what God wants to do for you, and what God wants to give to you can hinder your relationship. So this series is all about us discovering. Who we, Living Word Bible Church, us Christians are, and what we can experience. We're going to be here in Corinthians just to start off. This might be my staple scripture. I'm not positive yet because I am in love with this. But that God was reconciling the world to himself in Christ, not counting people's sins against them. I loved him. How did I miss him for 50 years? Look at, oh my gosh, highlight him. And he is committed to us. And I wasn't even going to start there. That was crazy. I was just, I always like to read above and below. And I found him. I just put him in there. He's a bonus. There you go. And he is committed to us the message of reconciliation. We are therefore Christ's ambassadors. Somebody say ambassadors. ambassadors. We're ambassadors. That's kind of cool to be an ambassador. You know, ambassadors, when you go over to another nation or they come over to ours. They're not necessarily bound by the rules and the limitations in where they're at. They're bound by where they come from. This is where I come from. These are my laws and these are my limitations. Just like we as Christians, we may be in the world, but we're not of the world. We're ambassadors in this world. I always think of the movie Lethal Weapon 2. Right? Do you guys remember that? They, they, they're going to arrest the, the, the guy from South Africa. All the police show up and they're all around with the guns. And uh, they said, you're coming with us. And he has that big old smile. And he says, no, I will not let you arrest me today. I have diplomatic immunity. Do you guys remember that? Yeah, I'm not bound by your laws. I have my own set of laws that I'm part of, but these do not apply to me. And us as Christians need to, number one, this is us. We have diplomatic immunity. The things that the world has to go through, we don't have to go through. I'm not bound by that. Some of you need to look at your checkbook and go, wait a second, I've got diplomatic immunity. God does not read the Wall Street Journal to find out whether or not He can bless you this week. He says, I will bless you in the times of famine. Great wells will spring up for in your life. I have diplomatic immunity in my investments. I have, right? I don't care what the doctor says. You need to turn to the doctor and go, I have diplomatic immunity. To hear this message in its entirety, visit wakeuptv.tv and click on YouTube. No sickness or disease can live in this body. I'm just telling you right now, diabetes can't be in here because by his stripes I have been healed. I am not bound by the same laws of this earth and is shackled up by depression. I don't need Zoloft. I got Jesus Christ on the inside of me. I've got everything that I need. I've got diplomatic immunity. 
Well, your granddaddy was angry. That doesn't matter. I'm a new creation in Christ Jesus. I have diplomatic immunity. And whatever's going on, well, you're going to be limited. And this is all your life. Right? How many times do we hear that from the time we're growing up of what your life... Well, here's where your life's going to be. Guess what? I have diplomatic immunity. There is no ceiling. There is nothing in my life that limits me. I live a limitless life. And I can do all things through Christ Jesus that strengthens me. Is there an amen anywhere in this church today? Turn to your neighbor and say, I got diplomatic impunity. I do. I'm not bound by your junk and your laws and all your junk that you have going on. I have the same boundaries. I'm a child of the king. I am joint heir with Christ Jesus. So that when I walk into the world, right, I, in it, I don't have to be of it. I don't have to be full of stress and anxiety and depression and worry and all of that garbage. That's not a part of who I am. This is us. See, who we are, we have diplomatic immunity. And God's word tells us what we can experience in this lifetime. Not the Wall Street Journal. Amen? Amen. My, um, I put on a, a contest on uh, Facebook for uh, cross words. And those are Christian cuss words. Amen? Cross. You want to find out. You know, we become, well, this is us. Who are we? We don't, right? We probably don't want to, for the most part, walk around and beep, 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 fill, fill, right? That's right. And I, I, I'll be honest with you. Uh, I w- was an amazing cusser. I was, I was one of the best. If they had an Olympic sport, I'd have, I'd maybe not gold. I might have been silver or bronze. I was a great cusser. I was. But then you begin to have kids, and they become a pastor, right? And so... <laughs> And then you constantly got your wife going, Pastor Scott, right? And so, so you got to get, you got to get cross words. These are words that you can use around your children and these are acceptable and okay. And so that was our contest. Now, before I said that, I have to say that, and I don't know how many of these stories I'm going to put in here. I might splash a couple in these because the Anderson kids and cuss words seems to be a very funny subject for y'all. And so... Baylor, when he was about three years old, um, he was just getting his vocabulary all together. He was such a little chatterbox. But for some reason, he could not say the word fork. No, this is a true story. He would forget the R and he'd put a, a U in there. <laughs> Betsy, uh, Miss Dion remembers, right? Which made it not a lot of fun to go out to restaurants with him. <laughs> Because I can tell you, it was a number of times, it'd be like at the at Vito's, and the waiter come over and go, Pastor Scott, it's so good to see you. And I believe that my other kids did this on purpose. I have no proof. I believe they stole his fork every time. So Baylor's like, where's my F? Where's Daddy, I need an F. I have no F, Daddy. I need an F. Dad, I can't eat without an F. I need an F. And I'm like, oh my gosh. Give him a fork. And the kids thought it would be uh, super funny at, uh, at uh, Jessica's uh, mother's. It was a party. It was a family gathering. And she was in her 80s. And so it was Holly's, it's Holly's grandma. And it would be the kid's great-grandma. So they thought at this big old family gathering where Pastor Scott and his family are at to continue to send Baylor to ask great-grandma for a fork. Do you know that's not funny? <laughs> She's like, uh, no, you can't have a, a, one of those. No. <laughs> oh, my gosh. I got so many cussing stories. All right, here we go. These are the, my favorites, and then I'll announce the, the, my, uh, the winner here at the end. These are acceptable <coughs> cuss words. <coughs> oh, Lord. All right, number one. I like stupid monkey. That's a funny cuss word. Holy Hannah. I've actually... You, that's one of mine. Holy Hannah. I don't know why. And then this one hit me hard because it was just cuckoo. <laughs> I can't imagine somebody cut me off in traffic. I'm like, cuckoo. <laughs> cuckoo. <clears throat> Shut the front door. I didn't know it was open, but for fudge's sake. Son of a biscuit eater. <laughs> I like this one. Oh, my Lanta. Isn't my Lanta like a, a, a medicine? Isn't that what it is? I've never thought of it. Oh, my Lanta. <laughs> uh, son of a sea cook. Holy fudge. Oh, wait, I put it out of order. Holy buckets of fudge ripples. Cheese its I'm throwing them off. The- 
This one has, I don't know if I can even say this, crap a doodle? I don't think you can put a doodle. <laughs> and all of a sudden it became a good word, but maybe I'm wrong. My kids say fork, and so I don't know. Shoot a pickle? <laughs> Sheep dip. Oh, snarf. Chimichangas. I used that one yesterday. I went, chimichanga. I like that. What the bubbles? Son of a motherless goat. That is one of mine. I do. I use that one all the time. Anybody else use that one? Are we being honest in here? I love son of a motherless goat. I don't know why. Sweet monkeys. Fravel knacker. Mother, father, brother, sister, brother. <laughs> no, I'm using that one now. Because it's so, you have to say it quick though. Mother, sister, brother, and father. Oh my God, that one hit me hard. Fluffin' Donkey, Holy Caputers, Sugar Booger, Fargo Snot, Holy Posturpedic. <laughs> That's a bed, right? Snappity Doo, Chips and Dip, and my winner, I, I like this one. This one hit me the hardest. Kelly Clarkson. I don't know why Kelly Clarkson. <laughs> Isn't that funny? <laughs> I'm going to start using that. Kelly Clarkson, get in here, kids. What are you doing? Kelly Clarkson, what a mess this is. Kelly Clarkson. I don't know why that's dang funny. All right. We'll splash some of these all the way through. All right. So this is us. We have different words that we get to use. Amen. Go with me to Luke 24, uh, verse 13 through 19. We're going to go into a really cool story. Jesus has just resurrected. They went to, uh, you know, the women went to the tomb and the angel was there and said, why are you looking for the living amongst the dead? I thought that was really cool. I wonder how many times us Christians, we go looking for life in dead places, right? We turn to the world's medicine, trying to get some life out of it. We turn to the horoscope trying to find out an area for our life. We turn to the Facebook to if I can just get enough likes, maybe I'll, I'll feel alive. And we look so many times to dead places trying to get the life that only our true Savior can get us and allow us to feel in this lifetime. We're going to the dead looking for the living. But here we find ourselves in this story, and I'm going to give you a number of points. Um, right now we've just done number one, diplomatic immunity within this verse 24. Now that same day, so this is Sunday, Jesus, and please remember, everything Jesus has been telling everyone is, hey, I'm coming back, I'll be back on Sunday. That same day, two of them were going to a village called Emmaus. So there was two of them, it was a husband and a wife, it's uh, Cleo and his wife is what they, they believe, and they're walking about seven miles. So they're walking away from Jerusalem, Jerusalem could be a picture of the church, they're walking away from it, and this is on the Sunday. And they were walking and talking with each other about what had happened. As they talked... You're back. Thanks for watching. Give us a thumbs up. Thumbs up. Share it. Like it. Put it out there. Don't forget about Girls Night Out. Boat. Seltzer <laughs> water. The stupid seltzer water. <laughs> I like that. That's what they gave Jesus. Girls Night Out is September 6th. Ladies, sign up for it. You can go to uh, wakeuptv.tv. Anyway, be in church this weekend. We will see you tomorrow. Thanks again for joining us today. Find out more or stay connected with Wake Up at wakeuptv.tv. You can also subscribe to our daily text reminders for Wake Up Daily Bible Study, which includes a direct link to the next day's episode by texting Wake Up, no spaces, to 84483. That's Wake Up to 84483. Thank you for listening to Wake Up on Christian Living Radio. Start your day every day with a positive word and prayer. We'll see you tomorrow morning. Christian Living Radio, spreading the good news of Jesus Christ 24-7. Our goal is to bring you a life-changing word through music and diverse programming like the one you're listening to now. Pastor Kenyatta Goins is the visionary of Christian Living Radio, and he's dedicated to the idea that Christians should even have a more prominent presence in the marketplaces. Maybe you need prayer for yourself and or your family, maybe for a friend. We'd be privileged to stand in the gap for you. If you're listening to this broadcast, click on the Contact Us tab and send us your prayer request. We'd also like to hear from you if you have something on your mind or just give us some feedback. We support many ministries, so maybe you'd like to make a one-time or a monthly recurring donation. We believe that when you sow into these ministries, you'll indeed be blessed. And of course, if you sow into this show in particular, we believe that it's a blessing for you, so please consider sponsoring us. 
There's a special area under the Donate tab where you can send your monetary gift or call 520-812-6363. That's 520-812-6363 to receive more information about sponsorship. Thank you.